What is up, everybody? Thank you so much for tuning in to another episode of the Anti-Gravity Group Podcast. My name is Braden Carlson. I'm Taylor Jesse. My name is Shane, or as you might know me, Postart. My name is Matthew, or otherwise known as Macho Matt. And today, there's a groundbreaking development on the Macho Matt camp. There has been work done (laughs) on his three-inch Wildman Punisher. And now... I feel like I have to apologize in advance to the audio-only listeners, but this is going to be a visual experience because Matt recorded a bunch of videos of him working on his rocket and sent them to me. And I've put together a beautiful edit that we can all watch <laughs> and then review here. So uh, this video is about 12 minutes long. Um, so if you're watching on YouTube, cool. That works out great for you. If you're listening, audio-only, um, it's still there's some good content in there. But uh, if you feel like skipping the next 12 minutes or so, I don't blame you. Uh, at any rate, we're just going to dive in right now. And I, uh, here, ladies and gentlemen, I present to you the Macho Matt 3 inch Punisher build. Howdy, folks. This is Macho Matt. Uh, actually, getting ready to start working on my 3 inch Punisher, believe it or not. So um, I'm here, here in my, my garage, garage filled with all my junk and stuff. Um, and yeah, first step is I'm gonna dive into this box here and see if I can find my three inch Punisher. Uh, I think I made a little bit of progress before I had moved into this place, but we'll see where I left off. Here we go. got the motor mount uh, cleaned up. I don't think anything, except for the aero pack retainer, has been fully um, adhered to the fiberglass. So I believe everybody's been cleaned up and sanded. Uh, let's see if we can get some some real shots here. Look at, wow. See, it's kind of kind of dusty. So at least trying to get a good um, you know bond between the bits. Um, so we got the uh, centering rings looking like they're good. Got my strap of uh, Kevlar, I believe. <coughs> one inch, one inch. Um, all right, and the airframe. For those curious of my uh, my other rockets that I have here, if anybody is, we've got, here, let, me, let me just flip the camera. Wow. I can't. Hang on, there's gotta be a bit. Um, here's the old screen at Beagle. And uh, despite what I think Braden said, I have um, had some issues with uh, fins breaking off at one point. So I've got to, um, I need to paint this again so I can actually fly it. Can't fly it without the paint. Um, and then got Taylor's old Amram. Um, I've got a, a motor case in here. I'm not sure, I, can, I honestly don't know. It's a 75 six, uh, 6400 case, maybe. Um, and yeah, I'm pretty sure my Intimidator uh, 1.6 right there. And then here's the old Dark Star, someday. Oh, it looks like we got an SS kit. I think this is the SR71. What do you know? It is the SR71 Blackbird. I think. I gifted this to my dad once upon a time, um, and I don't, uh, I don't think he, he just didn't spend the time building it, you know. Wow, like father, like son. For some reason, I wanted to fix some small engines on snowblowers, and so I got two of them for cheap. But anyway, so this is what I'm gonna clean off. I forgot to point out. Uh, here's the Magnum rocket um, with the very heavy nose cone. I think that's like a carbon fiber, carbon fiber uh, filament, maybe. Um, I think it weighs like five pounds <laughs> on its own. And then here's my, my Mazi. All right, so I got my workbench cleared off here. I uh, actually just freshly printed off 
uh, the wild man's instructions on how to build this thing. So we'll see how it goes. Okay, so I think I got through this stuff. Silver Sharpie, mm, don't have. Flip it around. Little retainer, I think I got that. Um, since I'll be injecting the internal fillets, I need a tight fit between the fan and the motor mount too, as well as the fan, blah, blah, blah. Blah, 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 blah. Okay, I'll figure out where I'm at here. All right, now I got everything out of the box. All the bits, <clears throat> all the bits and bobs and whatnot. Let's see, I think you must also be sure the Y harness when glued on the motor mount tube does not interfere with the fin positions. Slide the notch CR, centering ring over the Kevlar strap. Okay, I realized that I accidentally um, notched out both keys, which I think I only need just the top one to be here. So I think basically I'm going to be um, following the picture and uh, doing, not what I'm doing, but um, yeah, let me just do this. Please ignore the dog. Um, so what am I doing? Maybe I don't even need this. Okay, I like that. So you can see here, I got the fin in the airframe, motor mount, all right. Um, <laughs> I'm just gonna take it out. Ooh, ooh. Pretty sure this is how, how we did it on the 12 inch Punisher too. The fin looks about a half inch. Yeah, real great. Yeah, and then really fine CA. I've got some super glue. So we'll just do that. Put the lid on the craggle so that everybody's good. My top centering right here, bottom one down yonder. I found the bottle, the, 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 I found the bottle of CA. It was just in my rocket box that I got um, some handy dandy popsicle, popsicle sticks here. Uh, I think I'm probably just gonna do one pump on each. I don't wanna overdo it. So uh, I don't remember the order F. Oh, I'm pretty sure you do the resin and then the hardener. I think once you do the hardener, I think once you do the hardener, then the, the clock starts ticking. Well, I guess it would tick the other, anyway. I remember back in the day doing this on the DN. Rip. All right, well, so what I'm running into now is I think one of my straps is getting pretty close to the fin, fin um, slots, and so I don't want to do that. So I'm going to, I think I had cut this out a little bit more. Undo my centering ring here and I'm going to move. Right now, what I'm running into is my fins are like running right into the Kevlar. And so I'm gonna undo everything what I did here and then I'm gonna make it uh, to where I'm gonna move the Kevlar strap maybe over this way a bit. I really almost don't wanna show this, but that's where we got. <laughs> I, I'm basically using a metal file to cut through it. So yeah, I don't know. How does everybody else do it? All right. There you go. Gonna give it a shot. So, and also, if you realize, I, I didn't, I didn't do anything to really verify that the fin's not gonna line up on the thing. So, we'll see. Um, I apologize if this is kind of painful for you all, but this is just how I operate. <laughs> All right, here we go. We're gonna put a fillet on the top and then let it sit and bake for some time. I hope I'm not just making a mess. <laughs> I mean, I am, but I hope it's a good functional mess. Yeah. Um, and then integral. This is how I'm doing it to fill it. I know it's, I guess it doesn't really matter. It doesn't have to look super great. Yeah, I think I would've been like one pump, oh well.
I lied. I think I'm gonna go for the switch band right here. Um, got my coupler, and uh, yeah, I'm gonna try to do that. Um, so this guy is just sitting here waiting to cure. Oh my gosh, it's so grippy. Why did I do that? I guess it's only that one side, so it's not so bad. I'm going to move on from it. Yeah, the the two pumps is way too much, so I'm gonna use it up. Yeah, I need to put it on the airframe or the couple itself. So I've gone ahead and sanded. <laughs> Gosh, <laughs> probably making you, some of you roll your eyes. Um, okay. Yeah, I think we're gonna go for it right here. So I've already sanded the coupler where I want the switch band. So I'm catch it with the paper. Okay. <clears throat> back is what it gives me now. Actually, I don't think I want too much on here. No, in fact, I really don't. Because if it squeezes out, <clears throat> which it probably will, it'll uh, make for some sanding later. I really don't want to do that. Okay, so, oh my god. It's already kind of drippy. Interesting if this rocket, for whatever reason, is not structurally um, sound, and we have this whole video process that covers it. So I'll be able to see. And uh, also the critique of of all the the other anti gravity group members. I'm sure they'll have a lot to say about this. Okay, I forgot about that. So I got my epoxy around there. And I'm gonna slide this mug. Maybe I'll give it a twist. And just to really spice things up. So I guess the lesson learned here is to be real light. Real light with the epoxy. And that's good. All right. I think that's, I think we're good today. Thank you for watching. 13 is about 13. Whoa. Whoa. <laughs> All right, let's hear it. Let's give a round of applause for our man, Matt. Thank you. There we I go. Okay, I got a lot of questions. Oh, gosh. Welcome, all those in the audience. Wow, All right. <laughs> real change of uh, energy there. Um. <laughs> <laughs> oh you wow oh, you have that was you want to ask me um <laughs> um well first of all i'd just like to put out a statement that of i would like to stick up for matt a little bit for the viewers and listeners out there he does know how to build rockets the problem is is he has an interesting process and his brain erases after six months so <laughs> <laughs> uh, good old factory you kind of have to figure it out again um, I will say I, I don't ride that bicycle very often so I, I you don't sell that Kool-Aid too often yeah I don't sell that Kool-Aid exactly right. so, and exactly that's right. what we keep telling him he needs to I know I know you don't have to completely relearn how to build a rocket if you if you, build <laughs> if you never do stop. it more than every three years yeah <laughs> it's true true that makes um, sense yeah so one thing I just wanted to point out real quick before we dive in here is that uh, you committed the same atrocity that I committed when I made the Wildman Mach 2 video, and that was uh, you measured for the vent band without putting the bulk plate on top of the coupler. So mm. there's like an eighth of an inch that you haven't accounted for there. Okay. Um, sometimes it's a problem. Sometimes it's not. Yeah, It looked like he didn't even measure, though, so I think he's good. Yeah, well, I mean... Worst case scenario is it's too long and you can just trim it a little bit. Yeah. Ultimately, you guys are talking about the switch where I put the switch band on the coupler. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Did you stick the coupler in the nose cone? I did. To figure out where to put the switch band? So I basically, my thought process there was I wanted to have 
um, the nose cone off enough to where that to where the, the parachute would fit in there. Um, but that was just more of a gut feeling, I think, with what I went with. I thought I read somewhere that like you could do a half a caliber of uh I mean that would I would say that's the minimum you would want. Okay. Yeah. I personally want more than that. And what for the coupler into the nose cone? Yeah. Is Have you seen re- my Punisher? It's like an inch and a half. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Which is about that, what I think I have there. Yeah, it was just because mine wouldn't go in any further than that. Oh, my, okay. I also have an old, like I have a long nose cone. So mine went pretty far in and I have more room. So, okay. you know, that, that could be partially why I feel that way. Mm. I usually put it in as far as it'll go and then pull it back like oh, half an inch or so. I don't know. Okay, um, and then I just I just wanted to ask Matt. You said that you, you started to say you didn't verify that something was going to clear something, and I have a feeling that you meant you didn't verify the spacing between the centering rings for the fins to fit. Oh, no! What I was talking about was the Kevlar to the fin slots. I didn't really make sure. I just kind of moved the Kevlar so. The, the issue I was having was the Kevlar was running into where the fin slots were, um, where I had them. And so I moved it a little bit, but I didn't really totally check that it was correct. The the fin, the fin The couplers, I definitely made sure were spaced enough where the fin slot or the fin could fit between the two. Um, so, and I, I, I verified that now uh, after the epoxy has dried or cured, but... Um, but yeah, what I, yeah, it was just where the Kevlar was with regards to the fin slot. All right. Well, I mean, ultimately, the only thing that kind of went disastrous there, because I mean, I've I've made some pretty ugly front centering rings from trying to fit shock cores through and stuff. It happens to the best of us. Really, the only thing that you did explicitly wrong there was use completely thin west systems for gluing the stuff together and yeah. what was funny was when you talked to us about that when you said it had happened um we were like wow i did you should just gone and got some like five minute epoxy but i did note that there was like some loctite five or 15 or 30 minute epoxy sitting on the desk in the shot <laughs> so I have phenomenal uh, yeah. news for you, though, because today's topic of discussion is going to benefit you greatly. All right. And for that, I'm going to toss it over to Taylor. So, sorry, <laughs> Nigel is trying to add to the conversation here, but, um, well, we decided that the uh, podcast had been going so well and people seem to like it so much that we should do a whole episode <laughs> where we talk about glue and adhesives yeah. and all the things that people are going to get very upset about or yeah, there's one do. thing that's so. like incredibly <laughs> divisive among rocket people it's like tell somebody the glue they use is incorrect and it's the whole world comes to an end so we so, have our uh, opinions and so does everybody else but we know our opinions are correct so <laughs> so we'll, I'll put out a disclaimer at the beginning that uh we you know we're correct but also you know, <laughs> use whatever you want. <laughs> wow, you that can, is a good disclaimer. You can be wrong. It's okay to be want. wrong, yeah. and you are. Yeah, yeah. it's yeah. okay to be yeah. wrong. Um, and we also don't take ourselves seriously. So it is what it is. Uh, I mean, we do with the glue, though. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Everything's a anyway. joke on this podcast except for that. You are incorrect <laughs> if you yeah. do not use the same epoxy that we do. Okay. So I'm just going to go th- kind of through, um, well, a variety of things, but starting off with some um, of building techniques. So, you know, obviously when we start building a rocket, a lot of times it involves tacking things. So, what do you guys use for tacking? I think the obvious answer, at least for Braden, would be CA. Oh, yeah. Is baby. that right? Cyanoacrylate. That's my <laughs> dog right there. Do you have a preference? I've seen some people that are very opinionated on the brand of CA. There's like Zap only people or something. No, I, I didn't know that. I, it's just like the Bob Smith stuff because you can get it at any yeah. hobby shop. Plus, I like the huge bottle with the twisty lid. It makes me feel happy. 
Yeah, yeah, same. To me, Bob Smith is the good stuff, but that's just because I grew up with, you know, super glue, basically, for a lot of it. What do you um, do about the lid when it... I, mine, I think, expanded and broke the lid. I don't know. I don't yeah, know. Yeah, so get... you just... You just get really angry and then tr- give up. <laughs> I was about yep. to, but I had I had Loctite super glue sitting right there, you know, with I, the with the ergonomic squishy sides. I use like know, sewing you, needles to yeah. Oh, you need like a pin, down. like a mm-hmm. like a sewing pin, yeah, or like a really thin drill bit, and you can kind of push it out. Oh, right. Okay. Pause. What's the uh, hacking? Oh. As far as uh, tacking goes, my go-tos are either going to be the medium fill Bob Smith CA or just five-minute Bob Smith. If you want a CA all over your hands, though, I highly recommend the thin one. I noticed that's what Matt had in his video, um, (laughs) which is really only good for wicking things, (laughs) Yeah, in my opinion. You know, I never... I don't know if you saw, but I didn't actually get to use that. Oh yeah, you were saying it was plugged up. Yeah, like the cap, the cap is still stuck. I have to I have just to as well. That, you were gonna have a bad day. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> instant finger sticker right there, dude. Yeah, that's yep. a good time. That's for that using up. on the end of your uh, LOC body tubes. Yeah, dude. I should. Oh yeah, yeah. To prevent them from raveling, I should use that on my that... mustache. <laughs> Oh, oh, no. <laughs> please don't um um yeah i'm a, oh go ahead no no go <laughs> i'm a fan of the thick boy ca for tacking like the thick stuff with four c's you know what i'm saying yeah, <laughs> yeah that's i bought the big bottle of the extra thick one and then the aerosol can of the insta cure my god yeah. nothing can stop me I, Wow. I was using some accelerator the other day. It felt like a superhero. <laughs> Just <laughs> moving on. I built up my whole Mad Cow uh, two and a two point six inch Nike smoke in like two hours, Matt. Wow. Yeah. That's... So we'll have, we'll have to get get you caught up on on yeah. the quick build technique. But that's um, nice. That is uh, also worth noting. We usually cover about w- what has been done rocket wise, and Taylor built an entire rocket. I did. Yeah. It felt it's pretty satisfying to just check off an entire rocket in one day. <laughs> yeah, that's fair. Um, but I'll add and say that I also am a big fan of just tacking with five minute epoxy um, on bigger rockets. It takes too long. I'm sick of waiting around. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, I think like fiberglass kits, even like cardboard and plywood kits. 80% of the time, I'm going to take five minute over CA. What if I told you, though, that Tony Pipe, who, who got shut down for doing his level three with a minimum diameter of 3,400, that rocket, the, the coupler folded, but the fins were fine through Mach 4, and it came in ballistic, and the fins were fine, and those were tacked with CA. It is nothing to do with a lack of trust of CA. It's just like the same reason I don't like to do all the fillets at once. You know, it just, it's, I'm not a fan of it. (laughs) You want the working time? I do. Yeah. I like the working time. Nigel likes CA. He's purring into the microphone. Yeah. (laughs) Is that really loud on your end? (laughs) Yeah, I can't hear it. You're still like you keep leaning into the mic and it starts getting crazy loud for moments. <laughs> what? I wonder what the deal is. Just pick a spot and stay there. I'm a mover. <laughs> I'm moving around over here. <laughs> a mover and a shaker. Um. Also, CA only works if uh, you have good contact, and you know sometimes the fit and finish just isn't there. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you need to yeah. fill a little bit of a gap. Um, I just really lay it heavy on the spots that do have good contact at that point. <laughs> uh, and I will once again bring up that I'm a, lately a big fan of the West um, G5 epoxy, five-minute epoxy, because it's actually like three-minute working time and a true five-minute to hard. So um, I, It's just so expensive. 
Is it, it's like the same as Bob Smith. Nah, dude, it's way more money than that. Probably, no, it's I'm not. Just, I'm just oh, assuming you... that it's expensive. If I'm honest, <laughs> but <laughs> uh, it's like twenty bucks or eight eighteen bucks for the the two uh, four ounce bottles or whatever those are. Or yeah, I guess that's not bad. I just like that. Like every hobby shop has Bob Smith, so when <laughs> I go in for something else, I can. It's like impulse buying a candy bar at the checkout stand. Let me get yeah, we don't really epoxy have... water here. <laughs> I just don't really have any good we don't have good hobby shops in Kansas City, so Yeah, where do you get where do you get your epoxy? You guys have a hobby town. Yeah. But it sucks. The that hobby haven pretty... is a good one, but that I live one's not solid. close to there. Yeah, you what? live not close to anything, to be fair though. Yeah. Okay, but that, I mean Hobby Haven isn't over or it's like really far away. I think that's All where right, I got well. my CA. Hold well, on, I don't know. Tearing man. up the carpet. I guess if you're <laughs> going to order your <laughs> Nigel's throwing up on the carpet, is that what he said? No, no, no. Tearing, tearing up. He was oh, oh, oh. <laughs> Pulling out carpet threads. I was All so excited well. to not have to edit this one a bunch, but here we are. What? I don't think we've done anything <laughs> bad. The people can know about Nigel tearing up my carpet. Yeah, I guess you're right. They're here for the long haul. The real <laughs> listeners are gonna suffer through all of this and hang out with us, you know? That could be like a new 30 movie. people just talking about off. glue, so <laughs> Yeah. It's true. We're in too deep on this one. All right, it all stays. <laughs> Woo. I'm not editing anything. Also, Woof. Nigel oh. is part of the anti gravity group, so don't they want to know what he's up to? I guess he's that's kind of fair, our yeah. mascot. He hasn't worked on any rockets because he's doing renovations to Taylor's couch and carpet. <laughs> hey, at least he's not trying to renovate my built rockets. <laughs> That's true. All right. Well, what do you got next for us on the list? Um, fillets. Everyone's favorite. Yeah, I think um, we all have Matt, the same I'm gonna answer su- on this one. I'm, I'm yep. going to suggest not using un- unthickened <laughs> epoxy on your pellets. <laughs> but I, I think you would have figured that one out. Uh, uh, we we're should all probably- going to have the same... I'm going to see if I can even do it. I'm going to do it without. Oh, just like pull it up, like make a bunch of dams. <laughs> yeah, no. Just to prove the point. Yeah. I've, I've seen people do that online. Oh, <laughs> it's no. crazy. I think we should probably touch on the fact that you can use West Systems to bond things, but you need to thicken it with colloidal silica or, well, that's the only one I would really use if I was going to be using it for bonding, I guess, but. Um. Yeah. So in the future, Matt, when you're doing yeah. that kind of thing, five minute epoxy is your friend. All right. You know what's funny is multiple times I said, Matt, don't you need to get some silica? I think me and Braden stole all of it, and then you guys did. He's like, No, I have some. Yeah. <laughs> I now you did give me something a while ago. It. It. I don't think it's colloidal silica. It's some hobby chopped carbon. Well, there was that nonsense. Uh, Micro balloons. No. Um, it was, uh, I think it's some, some other kind of filler. Maybe it's even for, 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 um, fillets. I can't remember. It's a small <laughs> jar though. It's, it's not the carbon. I'll have to find it. I'll, I'll send it to you guys afterwards. You got it from me? I'm, I think it must've been. Hmm. Okay. Yeah. Well, I yeah. only use silica, I think. Right. Okay. Well, was it, was it West 410? I don't think so. I, I think would never like give that hobby. away. <laughs> <laughs> it's well, gold. There's a section for that later. <laughs> um, All right. um, yeah, so moving forward, Matt, uh, the only time you should use unthickened West systems is if you're using fiberglass or carbon fiber cloth. But I've I've learned. I've learned. Um, now, let me ask you guys this, if I may. Do you feel that the strength of the bond to the Kevlar Kevlar to the fiberglass. Is it going to be okay? Yeah, actually that is another case that I would use it unthinned if yeah. or unthickened if I was okay. going to use West systems. Cause you can, I mean, you can laminate carbon in, or Kevlar like it's fiberglass cloth or yeah. carbon fiber. Vern Knowles used to do it all the time. But, but the, but the Kevlar adhering to or bonding to the fiberglass, like, do you feel like that's, that's yeah, it's be, fine. That's a, oh, okay. Mm-hmm. okay. Pers- personally, I would mix up some with it's all thickened and just lay some fillets and smear some on your <laughs> Kevlar Sydney. just uh, for peace oh, of yeah. mind. It probably doesn't need it. I mean, yeah, yeah just did probably is fine. Yeah. Just be mindful of where your fins anyway. go. 
yeah. yeah, exactly. That's that's the thing. I'm kind of curious to know how it'll go. Where where the where the epoxy dripped. Um, I don't think any there's anything there like on the fence lots, but we'll find out. Hell, oh, sandpaper. You'll be all right. Yeah, we've all learned um, these lessons. Yeah. What's next? Um, but yeah, we all pretty much use West systems thickened with colloidal silica, right? For fillets under yeah. normal circumstances. Absolutely. Yeah, you, you got to take like a big breath when you take the colloidal silica lid off. Yeah, I like to put a straw in there and just oh. suck it up. <laughs> that stuff but is so weird. I will. <laughs> God, that would be so bad. <laughs> I will say on smaller rockets, um, for quick build, like what I used this Sunday, I just use JB Quick, the fast cure mm. JB Weld, mm -hmm. and it makes really good fillets. I mean, it's Dude, kind of I expensive, know. but it's it cures so fast, and it makes such good fillets. It's mm. like amazing. Regular JB Weld, honestly, like for as much of as it, it kind of started as a meme on my channel, for me anyway, it's really funny because I have people like in my ear, they're like, I've flown JB Weld fillets to Mach 4. Why are you making these videos like any of this is surprising? I'm like, I didn't know. So I assume <laughs> a lot of people that don't know anything about rockets also didn't know. And you know what? Those videos do well. So I'm continuing that series. <laughs> But well, and there's also this there's this certain type of person that's all like JB Weld can't be used for anything that's not metal. And it's like, well, it's a it's epoxy. It's, yeah, it's not like it's not filler rod. It's not actual <laughs> welding material. Yeah. Yeah. It it's not ground up steel and I mean, I know there's the resin in steel, but you know, like let's yeah. be real here. It's epoxy with with something in it. <laughs> Stinky metal. Yeah, stinky metal epoxy. <laughs> and I love it. It's great. I do too. But the, um, yeah, the regular stuff's actually pretty strong. You lose about a third of your strength with the quick cure stuff, but boy, does it, you can do some quick building with that. <laughs> <laughs> boy, does it cure quick. And it's, it's, I think it's thicker too. I was like, this stuff is really, like, it doesn't sag at all. I wonder if it's heavier. JB Weld's already pretty heavy to begin with. It didn't. It didn't seem overly heavy. It didn't really add. It seemed about the same. I don't know. All right. Well, we'll see when you're missing those sims by ten feet. <laughs> wow. I really wish I had done something different for the fillets. Um, and uh, something. One the the other. Th there's one other thing that I've used as for a fillet before, and it was when I turned my gas mark, built my gas marker rocket, which I believe is like an ABS tube or something. I don't know, but there's something called PC7 epoxy paste, and it's about the consistency of black tar, and it's really hard to get out of the. It comes in like a metal, looks like a little metal paint can, hmm. and. Uh, it's super thick and it will bond to anything like it's Whoa. so gnarly, but I <laughs> use that for fillets on that. Cause I knew regular epoxy was going to have trouble bonding to that like ABS and it worked so good and you could fill big gaps and you can kind of use it to like, if you need to like shape something like, I don't like it's machinable once it cures, mm. if you know, know what I mean. So it's thick yeah. enough. You can kind of shape it. Or like put, get it into a, you can build it up onto something or fill some big gaps and then really shape it with a Dremel or a file or whatever, if that makes sense. So it's pretty handy. What's the working time on it? A, like 45 or 45 minutes or something. Oh, okay. Or no, no, no. Working time, 20 minutes, maybe. Mm. It's what quite about a while? fix it epoxy clay, dude? Yeah. So... I, I you I like the epoxy clay to fix nose cone tips that break off. Oh yeah, I've actually Ooh. never used the stuff because I was just like I can't really think of an applicable use case it's for this. It's so at the heavy moment. though. I remember Apogee used to recommend using it for fillets on the Aspire if you put a G80 in it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> to prepare for supersonic speeds. So it does yeah. work. It's super heavy though. It's like ridiculously it is, heavy. It is interesting some of the things that apogee recommends but we don't need to dig too far into that <laughs> but yeah i was like i can't like i cannot get behind the 
epoxy but, clay fillets. But I guess from the outside looking in, if you're just getting into rocketry, it could be kind of intimidating to try and do like beautiful fillets with regular epoxy and just having this fudge that you <laughs> press into the right <laughs> shape <laughs> kind of seems really attractive. Uh, but yeah, I've you I like using it to for broken off nose cone tips. You basically put put a like a machine screw into the where the broken tip would be and epoxy that in and cut the end off. Or I guess you could just use a piece of all thread and then you stack up all your <laughs> epoxy clay around it. <laughs> and then that's kind of what you did for the Arcus the nose cone. That's it's what exactly I was what I did on the Arcus nose cone. Yeah. But I knew about that because I did that on my Nike smoke when it broke the tip off and it worked way too well. So that's just the go-to now. Yeah. I'm scared to ground test my Nike smoke for that reason. <laughs> like, I don't once you get the it. all thread tip on it then it's super durable <laughs> yeah but i don't want to have to get to that point okay well you know it's going to happen eventually so all right well it doesn't need to happen in my dirt backyard you could, all right you could put a bit <laughs> do the old tennis ball in on it <laughs> i think it makes more sense just to not ground test it as much as people are going to be up in arms about that i mean i could just tell you what i use. i I feel like if anyone should be up in arms about that, it should be you. <laughs> Breen doesn't after, ground test his rockets. They just hit trucks. <laughs> yeah. After the Honest John incident, you should want to ground test your rockets. That had nothing. To, I did ground test that rocket. It had nothing to do with that. And then you changed something. Not, barely. <laughs> Anyway, Why was this, I this is to a... assume that putting the parachute in a deployment bag instead of not was going to be a big enough volumetric <laughs> change? I want all of you to look me in the eye and tell me you would have ground tested that change. There's not a chance that any of you would have. Well, we know exactly. Matt wouldn't. Moving no, <laughs> I wouldn't, but that I feel like that would be good motivation for me to do them moving forward. I ground test every single flight. <laughs> <laughs> i doubt that just to make sure <laughs> yeah no chance i i already had one when i was younger and then i'll just take the calculated recommendation put another five grams in there and it'll come apart <laughs> blow it up or grams. blow it out <laughs> anyway back to our scheduled programming i suppose are, are we like are we done are we, wait are we done with the fillets everyone we're not talking about oh. we're not talking about like fillet um techniques or anything, right? We're just talking about the material. Right. What? I mean it's, it's uh, just about glue. I mean you can talk about whatever you want. I want to know what you did on your fillets <laughs> for your uh your Nike your little Nike smoke. What do you mean? What I used JB Well, I told you. Well yeah, yeah. But did you use a spoon or what did you use to uh what was your process? No, because it was a tiny rocket, a so I yeah, used I the say, big tongue a... depressor. Oh, okay. A big popsicle stick? The yeah, giant popsicle the, stick. The popsicle sticks that you had in the picture are perfect for your three-inch Punisher, if that's why you're asking. Right. Well, that's yeah. what I'm planning on using. But so you use okay. So you use one of those, Taylor. I like using the like three inch and above. I like using the spoon. But all right, well, here we go. This is the debate between us. We all agree on glue. Like, yeah, but if you're a real idiot, if you use a spoon, like a stupid. <laughs> I'll get a spoon or socket. Or you could pick your favorite size socket and use yep. that. Socket yeah. is the way, dude. It rips. It, it is, is way. It is actually way more consistent. The I kind of like it, but I don't think yeah. I've done that. Okay. And then you can just you wipe got, it off with denatured alcohol. Yeah, just make sure if you're you wipe it in off. Any state that's yeah. not California. <laughs> yep. Go to use your wow. 13 millimeter, and it's it's now an eight because you put a you all over it. Would use it for right? <laughs> well, can you I get use... a check, actually, Matt? What uh, 13 is? What it is, is about... that? Rough? 13 okay that's about not. that's what i thought but yeah you don't need a 13 millimeter socket for anything you, you don't yeah super root people over here yeah <laughs> <laughs> um the next category was laminating but i mean i think we're all well maybe not i don't know we traditionally we have used west systems um i guess we use US Arcus, composites we, on the arcus yeah yeah that was pretty nice i actually was. ordered the super slow yeah. cure because i was afraid it was going to be too hot um <laughs> yeah i don't remember wasn't necessarily a bad thing that. Uh, you're like i don't know it's gonna be hot when we build this and then it didn't cure for like 19 hours in the heat 
Jeez. I was like, oh my God, it's never going to dry. Okay, well, I didn't know U.S. Composite Slow meant that it was like... <laughs> they mean it. Date, like <laughs> dumb slow. Three um, to five I business don't... days. Right. I know <laughs> now business we need days. medium. That I mean... Yeah. Well, and I mean, it was, it's fair to assume that it could flash cure, but like my mind, that's where you were. My mind was on the once it's on the rocket, like you live at your house, but Postart and I don't. So, you know, being 25 hours away would have created a slight issue <laughs> if the rocket was halfway cured. I would have had to do the same thing as last time. I'd be like, well, have fun saying and I'm out of here. <laughs> exactly I really what wish I, I could did. have. To be fair, I just didn't that want was to bad. End up with the situation where we didn't have the right epoxy somehow because we weren't gonna weren't gonna be able to get more. Unbelievable that you would take time to consider that. <laughs> what a stupid idiot! Am I right? <laughs> oh. Yeah, you're right. Um, well, what's on the next? I've, or what's next on the roster? Well, I was just gonna say I've used Aeropoxy laminating resin and uh the Proline laminating resin and they all work the same. So <laughs> they're yeah, they're all like really Pick similar. Your flavor. I don't know. Yeah. It's just thin in a wet out fiberglass, fine. So But if you don't use West Systems, you're incorrect. I'd like to reiterate. <laughs> yeah. Uh fillers. What do we put in the epoxy? Splenda? Yeah, Splenda yep. works really good. Um, that way you got a nice snack afterwards. Yeah, sand. I was going to say sand. I put a lead shavings. Whoa. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this is for nose weight. <laughs> Wherever you want it, you can add it all around. Um, I mean, fo- colloidal silica was it 406, the West System yeah. one. That's mm-hmm. that's the go-to. The, the signature go-to. We use it for fillets. I had never really used it for bonding before I built my V2 and oh really 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 short coupler I glued it in with that because I was really afraid that it was going to fold in half right there what'd you use bef- before that for bonding this is BSI stuff oh yeah that makes sense I guess oh well, you got a uh, problem with it is this no this is, oh here we no. go the- <laughs> The glue argument is going to start a fight. Here it goes. The anti-gravity group Dude. fallout. Yeah. <laughs> I, I'm taking I my have... rocket channel and I'm going home. <laughs> Taylor, I still have some carbon fiber shavings if you want them. No. Yeah. I'm good. yeah we, you told me we to get to talk about carbon ago. fiber. By the way, you quick. could have used those on your motor mount. Yeah, I know. I, I wasn't really sure what I was doing until after I did it. Which is the you still part, could but, use them if you wanted to yeah. make fillets with them, because that's what I did on my Nike smoke. Because I didn't have any silica yet, because I built it right after we moved here, so I hadn't uh, ordered I mean, any yet. Just, and I was like, I have as a long bunch as you don't use it on the carbon. outside of the rocket. Yeah, I know. Yeah, I'm but just sanding it would not about, be fun. Since we yeah. are talking about fillers, we can bring up the, <laughs> my opinion of uh, chopped carbon fiber in epoxy, which is that it sucks. And it does not increase the strength at all because your uh, fibers are running in random directions and they're too short and lots of problems like that. And it makes it hard to work with and hairy and... Well, okay. Basically... I will say that it only gets hairy if you use it wrong. You're not mixing it enough. Sorry. Sorry, sweaty. Um, But (laughs) seeing how you mix 406 into... uh, cottage cheese it doesn't shock me that you've never had the, <laughs> yeah. the carbon fiber mixed properly but i do have to say i'm with taylor on this now in that it's like the way carbon fiber works and fiberglass cloth works is because of the pattern that it's laid out in the so, weave yeah so well, it doesn't you, have you, to be a weave if you yank out anyway. your weave then you got nothing left <laughs> um and I really think head to head with like any other filler, all that it's doing to make it stronger is adding thickness. Mm-hmm. So I, I've had this idea for a while. I even designed the 3D print file to make these molds to take like the same batch of West systems, mm-hmm. mix it up, then put it in Dixie cups or whatever, then add each filler and pour it into the mold. I was going to buy like a hand dynamometer to pull on them and brake test them. 
but they're really expensive. So I haven't done that yet. <laughs> There's cheap ones for like 45 bucks, but they're only good to like 120 pounds. And that feels like it's not going to be enough to break the epoxy. Yeah. And going above 120 pounds, the price goes from like $50 to like 500. So uh. that's just kind of up in the air right now. Now I will say after ragging on it, I do have some and occasionally use it. So, you know, Where do you uh, use hypocrite, it? On, on honestly. Stuff? Huh? You use it but just I'm on... angry when I'm using it. I like the point. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this is so dumb. This rocket sucks. I hate sucks. this. It sucks. This is garbage. <laughs> Here's an idea, Taylor. If you, to get rid of, you can just put some of it in your cereal. That'll help. Oh. Yeah. Oh. yeah. <laughs> well, joke's on you. I do that every morning. <laughs> <laughs> what? You eat We're... cereal? I had yeah. a bowl of nails for breakfast. <laughs> I don't eat milk. Put some on your pepperoni pizza. <laughs> Um, well, should we jump into West 410? The Godfiller? Uh, or, or really, we can just... I mean, because I was including kind of like finishing fillers in with... Um, like not... Like... Uh, not necessarily epoxy-based fillers, you know what I mean? Oh, so like Evercoat? Was, yeah. So there's been like this ongoing quest for the perfect filler. Because it's like... There's so many sanding disasters that yeah. have happened because we keep like, building to be a better answer. That take five days to sand. <laughs> yeah, oh, no. and so really the the twelve inch Punisher where Braid, me and Braden <laughs> finger paint or Braden finger painted. <laughs> I was trying to be a little nicer about it, but basically we went and bought some <laughs> micro balloons and mixed it with the epoxy. But neither of us being experienced with micro balloons, we didn't know that the ratio so we basically didn't use enough micro balloons which meant that it didn't sand super easy <laughs> and uh brayden finger painted his on which it was beautiful is exactly what it sounds like <laughs> it just looked like you smeared icing all over it and then he's like all right peace out i'm going back to idaho <laughs> well some of it was icing to be fair i was eating cake while we were doing it oh, I- <laughs> um and that was possibly the worst sanding experience I ever had. And the, it still looked absolutely <laughs> terrible after that. So I had to find something else. So uh, I went to the auto parts store and I got, what is it? Evercoat uh, glazing, glazing and spot putty. But it's like a two-part, um, uh, what do you call it? Uh, body filler. Body it's filler, like, yeah. But it's, it, it's like Bondo, uh, polyester base. That's what I was trying to think of. It's cool, too, because it's like you put it on green or whatever, and it turns blue. It's one, one of those two things it swaps colors, mm-hmm. so you know it's dry and ready to sand. It dries really, really fast, though. The nice thing about it being polyester oh, base, polyurethane. Yeah, almost too fast, but you can sand it so quick, so you can like put it on, up, and sand can, it, just, do it again. Yeah, do it again, <laughs> just over and over. So you don't, it's not a bunch of wasted time waiting for it to cure and then being disappointed. You can get to the disappointment a lot sooner. <laughs> but <laughs> since it's like a poly hardener, you can change the amount of hardener. Like you can use a little yeah. less and it'll dry slower and that doesn't oh, this, affect yeah. the integrity of it. Th- mm. This is something you have to mix together? Yeah. It's just oh, like, bon- okay. it's like Bondo, but it's just a, it's a different brand and I'm, it's a lot better in my opinion. What's the red it's stuff? It's super nice. The red the Bondo red spot blazing. putty. No, like, that stuff's yeah. really good for like Bondo. small stuff. Yeah. Oh, mm-hmm. okay. Like pinholes. Which we all still use, I think. Yeah. Um, but yeah. it's really like an imperfection filler. It's not like a disaster filler. Yeah. I'm yeah. pretty much over it though at this point. Really? But, yeah. It's, I'm all in on the, the 410. So yeah, that brings us to uh I I don't remember what I was building, but I was just curious about I was like there's gotta be a better answer. And so I for a while I'd been looking at you know, I knew West West Systems had some like uh fairing fillers. And I'm like, they have to make one that's easy to like actually easy to sand. So I ordered a tube of the um West four ten, which is does anyone Micro know what that's called? Filler. Micro light. So we uh we had tried the what's the other one? Four oh seven or four oh yeah nine. Yeah, don't recommend don't that. Let me tell you. It's just like called light filler or something. I don't I think know. it's just but called you fairing want, filler. Fairing filler. Which sounds like it's what you want, but it's the micro light and it is you you can mix it. You're basically making your own super fill. 
if anyone's used that, except it's better. <laughs> what what I really liked about it, because I used it on the Nike Smoke, is that because it's epoxy based, I like I let it tack up for like three hours and then I went back out there with a glove on, put my finger in alcohol and just like tapped it down into the perfect shape for the front and oh, like the leading and trailing idea. edges for my fillets. So yeah, it oh, it's so beautiful. You can just make like perfect sculptures on your rocket and it is a wonderful <laughs> thing. <laughs> but it's like you can really lay it lay it down. You can smooth out the icing the way, the way you want it and yeah. then you just sand away. And it's like happy sanding. It's not like angry sanding. And I want to uh, <laughs> reiterate here for those who didn't quite catch that it is the 410 micro light <laughs> fairing filler. If you buy the other one, you're going to have a bad time. You can go watch my little John build video if you want to see how poorly <laughs> that goes. Because it was basically just like sanding epoxy still. And it took a really long time. It was Man, awful. the worst when you use a lot of filler and that first like 10 seconds of sanding, you realize you messed up and it's yeah, going to be hours of sanding. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm so gun shy about it now. Like I was like, this better be as good as Taylor said it was. Because if not, I'm going. <laughs> I know to punch you were a hole convinced it was gonna not be it, and I'm like, yeah. I mean, it worked for me. <laughs> doesn't it always? <laughs> no, not it doesn't. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, okay, but can I backtrack here for a second? You really mm-hmm. would have. Do you think the Punisher was a worse sanding experience than the Arcus? No, it was just different. Well. <laughs> No, because <laughs> that was crazy, dude. We sanded one um, tube for like eight hours. That's a part of it. Vi- like that really didn't get conveyed in the video because it was just like, yeah, you know, us time lapse having fun, giggling and sanding. But we were like <laughs> sweating, like we just went for a five mile run, yeah, in a hundred degree say... weather for an entire day in Taylor's garage. <laughs> <laughs> maybe, maybe close to equal. The Arcus is maybe worse because we decided to brush primer on, roll it on. And that was beautiful. That was smart. Well, I mean, I think it did help, but it sucked. Um, yeah. Now, I, the thing is, now if we were to do it again, or sorry, when we do it again, um, <laughs> are we going to just glaze the whole thing with 410? It's like a whole gallon of West yeah, Systems? Yeah, well, that's why I ended up, that's oh. what I ended up buying it for. Sorry. Uh it was after you guys left and I oh, was yeah. finishing up the Arcus. And I just, I'm like, it, cause it, it, we had made progress, but it just wasn't what it, it wasn't, I wasn't ready to give up on it yet. It was still a little embarrassing looking. So I was like, I'm just going to try this. And however it ends up is how the rocket's going to be. And I kind of, you could just squeegee it on the whole rocket and it stands so easy. So yeah, I mean, for now on, if I glass a tube, you could just put that all over it and just like <laughs> it would be honestly fine. that that might motivate me to get back to work on my five and a half inch BSD Horizon that I own that I have, and um, it's uh, <laughs> I did mylar on it, but there's still some spots that are a little need some finessing. Yeah, I was like, my mylar finish. I'm over the mylar. I'm going back to peel ply. I just never am satisfied with the way it looks. It wasn't good on your five and a half inch horizon. <laughs> <laughs> that you don't own, that you don't. Oh, you don't have yeah, one? Yeah, I don't have. I thought oh. everyone had one of those. Oh, yeah. that's crazy. Well, anyway, sorry. It's just that rocket in particular that's my favorite thing to do with. Because I almost sold it to him. <laughs> really close. And he's like, I'm just kidding. I'm keeping it yeah. and building it. It was when I was getting ready to move. <laughs> I was like, do you want to buy this? Like, what's it worth to you? But he knows that I got it for $20. That's another story <laughs> in its own. But uh, he's so like, he, I'll sell it to you for 200 I don't think dumb is I didn't get it for the same $20. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Postart tried to win it. Yeah. <laughs> but I won <laughs> it. And now it's mine. I have it. It's actually <laughs> in this house. I have it. It's over Postart, there. you should just steal it. Just steal it. He only got we'll see if it gets a little flat overnight. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> the problem is I don't have enough rockets. So if he steals it, I'd really be hurting for rockets to fly. 
just replace it with another. <laughs> Not, oh, I only have 20 rockets with broken fins now. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, anyway. <laughs> That's what I do. If I break the fin on it, you won't want to work on it. <laughs> it's got tip-to-tip glass. If you broke the fin, it would be probably quite unfixable. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um. So... Yeah, West 410. Yeah, <laughs> the godsend filler. We're, we should do a, like a tier list for epoxy fillers and epoxies. Yeah. That That's would tier. really start a storm, <laughs> dude. Um, So the, I guess, I mean, that's pretty much it. it I had um, at the end here an unusual glue segment. What haven't we tried that we're interested in, even though it might be really dumb? I well okay. It doesn't so, have to be dumb. Have you seen the Infinity Bond stuff? It's like what's that? It's like uh, they sell the brand at Harbor Freight, but it's uh, they have one that's called, I think it's HP One Twenty. Apparently, the MSDS is like exactly identical to the Hisol that everybody loves. Wait, is it a cartridge? Yeah. Wait, they sell HP 120 at Harbor Freight? No. It's the same oh. brand that they sell the cheap five-minute epoxy that's like three bucks at Harbor Freight, but they make like an exact clone of the high saw one, which I think is E120 HP. This one's called HP 120, and apparently it's like exactly the same, but like half the cost. So hmm. I really want to try it. I actually just bought some... Uh, E120 HP stuff. Yeah, yeah, I have a tube of it somewhere, but I lost it when I got when I moved, which sucks because it's like fifty dollars. <laughs> I found out you can get on McMaster for twenty. Oh, I probably didn't pay fifty for it, but yeah, it's uh, well too everywhere much. else it's like thirty five. Did you get a glue gun from McG- McMaster? We have them at work for work. Oh, must be nice. <laughs> must be nice to have a job. Anyway. <laughs> oh, <geez. laughs> Does anybody else um, uh, have anything they want to lean into epoxy wise? Not epoxy wise, but I'm, I'm for some reason curious. I mean, I know it's not the answer, but it's just like you ever been curious about those, like the universal glues, like when you go into the hardware store and it's like this is glue. Yeah, like there's like the E six thousand. I was gonna say the E six thousand. Like, yeah. Are you really making fun of me? Do you know what I'm talking about? Yeah, I know what you're talking about. Yeah. I've Whoa, used that on do you have I know it's a glue discussion. We don't have to get this hostile. Yeah. Right. Did you just say to me? Uh, E2000 is really funny, huh? Really funny. <laughs> oh. I was messed like, oh, yeah, the E6000. I was I'm like, oh, say okay. That. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I didn't even have a bottle of it. Whoa. Yeah. Whoa. I remember Would once. Did you glue your shoe back together? <laughs> no, he put some new t- uh, uh get back to me on that one. Shingles, shingles on his roof. Thank oh, you. Yeah. <laughs> you could have used E6000 on your Punisher. Oh. <laughs> there was a uh, this kid, a college kid that showed up to a Tripoli Houston launch um when I lived down there and he was doing his level 1 with like a Mad Cow 2-inch black brand and the fin broke on landing because it landed on the runway. So we went over there and we were talking to him. He's like, I'm going to try it again today. And he pulled out this little tube and he's like, yeah, it's epoxy, but this like, you don't have to mix it. It's just in here. And it was like gel. It looked like a hand sanitizer. <laughs> and he just like <laughs> squeezed it on and smoothed it out with his finger and took it back up. I'm not going to say uh, a year that this happens so i don't incriminate anyone but the person running the launch was like eh, yeah give it a shot and the fin just ripped off <laughs> immediately <laughs> wow so i don't know what that was but i'm not curious to try that um <laughs> um also like uh subfloor glue like liquid nails type hmm. glue oh yeah it's I've, really heavy, but man, I use it at work all the time. Like, uh, so we use subfloor glue, actual subfloor glue, which I think is better than liquid nails. But, um, man, once it cures, it's rock hard. It's a little heavy, but I'm I've, like, 
Uh, you could use that. Why not? I feel like I've seen <laughs> like pictures from the early 2000s of people that did use that to build like a big yeah, lock like Sono tube rockets with yeah. with construction adhesive. Wow. Yeah. What about? I mean, what? it's dirt cheap and really strong. Like you, it will not come off at anything. What about Gorilla Glue? I've never used it to glue. Oh yeah, my god! I mean, you, we could open up another wormhole with this cracking <laughs> liner thing. I've never yeah. used it to put a rocket together, but I've used to put a lot of motors together. And incidentally, yeah. none of them cracked the yeah. liner and blew up. Yeah, I've never cracked any <laughs> liners either. But Gorilla Glue gang, you know, that here at the Anti Gravity Group, we are firm believers in gluing our motors with Gorilla Glue. <laughs> yep. Um, mm-hmm. wow. And when I bought the Glue All Max. It got foamy just like Gorilla Glue does. Shocker. I want it, but I bet you pull up the MSDS. It's like identical. I bet whatever I it is, it's the same. Yeah. The difference is on the bottle of Gorilla Glue, it says dampen to foam or whatever. Mm-hmm. I don't remember exactly what it says, but it mentions you, that you can dampen it, which it does not say that on the Elmer's bottle. Which is polyurethane even glue. Is polyurethane glue. So that people, they all foam. Yeah, and the craziest thing to me was that I felt very vindicated when Carl from Aerotech posted the video for building the 05500, now 05280 or whatever. Or no, backwards. It was the 05280, now it's the 05500. But he's like, "Uh, use Elmer's glue all or Gorilla Glue. And I was like, yes, yes, I win. (laughs) And then he's like, I like to get a damp towel and run it into the liner before we glue them in. I was like, (laughs) <laughs> no way <laughs> cti used to recommend that on some motors the yeah, n5800 that's what caused, in particular that's what caused the problem i think there was like you know we could count on one hand probably the number of people that actually cracked the liner but it happened to somebody and so then there that's where it all started so yeah so they're saying the the, the issue happened because people weren't dampening the liner with no someone like a Got it super wet, I think, and it just bl- and they used a lot of Gorilla Glue, and it just oh. blew out the liner. Oh. We also watched so like, somebody glue a grain halfway in a liner, go up to Tim's trailer yeah. with an N5800 with a grain stuck halfway out of the liner, and Tim was like, yeah, uh, I got nothing for you on that one, sorry. <laughs> I will say, I like, I will never do it in, like, in a, um, uh, like, on the field, like... Hmm. Even the humidity in the air makes a big difference. So I try to always do it inside with the, you know, in the AC if possible. Yeah, I was going to say, oh. in Argonia like, on a nice humid day, you might be running into problems. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, I guess if you use Gorilla Glue on the field and it was really humid, that could cause problems. So Here's the thing, though. Is just, Elmer's Glue All Max not going to do the exact same thing? I mean, I don't, I don't think, I think they're the same, but I have no proof, right? I don't want to tell people that. Yeah. (laughs) I believe that they're the same, but you know. Every, every single motor in all of our cluster flights that require glue, Gorilla Glue. That's of any convincing that I'm not saying not to use Glue All Max. The the convenience of Gorilla Glue being at stores is nice because Glue All Max is nowhere. And I can get the little bottle. Because you, the glue all max, basically you have to order online, comes in the giant bottle and then it like, you know, it goes bad or whatever, or like cures in the bottle because it's been sitting there too long. Well, does anybody have anything else or should we move on to the Patreon stuff? I, I guess we can be good. All right. Well, let's do it then. We got a few. Um, UPS Rocket Man says... For cardboard stuff, and we didn't touch on this, I'll use Tight Bond for stuff with 29 or smaller motors, BSA 5 and 30 minute for 38 to 54 motors, anything fiberglass gets West Systems if I have it. Recently, I've been using US Composite 635 for fillets, and it seems to work well. Um, I would like to put it out there in the ether that my PML or my Pemtech King Kraken is built only with Tight Bond 2, and I've flown it on a couple different I motors. Actually, Lane Pemberton, I messaged him because I think I got that thing when I was like 16. I messaged him and asked if he thought it would take a J motor. And he said, I don't know, but if you try it and it doesn't, I'll send you another one just for trying. <laughs> but after, <laughs> wow. 
after the process required in cutting those fins out of tubes. If you're not familiar with the King Kraken, it's a tube fin rocket. It's got four tube fins and they're really funky shape. You cut it with an X-Acto knife. Um, they send you a template for it. I, I didn't really have any motivation to do that again. I still don't. So, <laughs> uh, but maybe maybe we'll try a J in that thing. It's gonna have to be a tame one. I'm not I'm not going to J500 or anything. But it's taken a couple i357s. Pretty. It flies a little funky when you get it moving really fast, but nothing came <laughs> it off. Does. I think it's the squidly canards, as they call them. This is on the nose. Yeah. Cone. Yeah. Or just all the drag, maybe. Yeah, it makes it does like a big like tornado shape. Yeah. It's beautiful. <laughs> um, but yeah, type on two. Uh, I actually just saw somebody post it on Facebook. They're like, I did it the the way I used to with smaller rockets. He's like, I did five layers of type on for fillets with yeah, sanding between each one. I was like, you know what? Props for having that patience, but like Yeah, you yeah. know at, as a carpenter, I have nothing against the wood glue. It's uh Especially on cardboard stuff, it's going to penetrate a lot better. I mean, yeah, I don't have the patience for it, but... Yeah, it just takes a long time. Yeah. It is interesting, though. You see people argument all the time. They're like, well, the, the glue is stronger than the material. I'm like, yeah, but that is also true of epoxy. You are talking about cardboard. <laughs> like, this is not, this is not shocking. Um, and you'll still get the same effect if something goes wrong, like... My also, seven and a half inch iris, the fillets stayed attached to the fin and then just <laughs> ripped the top layer of cardboard off the motor tube and the airframe tube. So there's just cardboard stuck to it. So I'm like, yeah, I mean, really any glue is stronger than that top wound layer of cardboard. You're correct. Do you peel the glassine the outer layer? Up? Yeah. Um, it depends. Usually not, but the glassine was peeled on the motor tube that the iris fins ripped off of. Uh, usually, I just do the wet paper towel trick and Whoop. soak Whoop. her up. Is the peeling, is that to allow for more space for the glue to expand? I forget. No, it's just for better adhesion because when oh, you open okay. it up, it's not like finished cardboard. So, it's the theory, yeah. I think, is that it's more porous and it'll yeah. bond so that, better. The glassine layer is kind of like the, it's like a waxy yeah smooth glossy finish and so it's kind of opening up the like craft paper part of it yeah but if you if you peel that and you're not going to glass over it like it's a nightmare finishing scenario and like my my bsd five and a half inch horizon that i have is uh also a cardboard that i glassed and i i didn't peel that i wiped it down um so that was just well i just i've seen some people where they're like if you don't expose it like it, they act like it's not gonna work. I'm like, I mean, it's I, admittedly better, but it, it's not like you're like. Rarely are you gonna get penetration through every layer of cardboard. I mean, you're still gonna right end up with with the same thing. And honestly, we did do it with the any. Arcus though, and absorb like yeah. half a gallon of epoxy per two. You can actually well, saying like when they do fillets, they'll like take an exacto knife and cut like where the oh, fillet yeah. goes. No, that's chaotic. Not a chance. Yeah, I'm that's just take way too much time. right over yeah. top, yeah. right on top. Motor tube. Me. I'll peel the motor tube. No, no way. Wipe it with a wet paper <laughs> towel. Call it a day. Um, <laughs> Michael Graylist says I really like the West System Six Ten or the Total Bow version called Thixo for when I'm doing fillets. We didn't oh. touch on that either. Yeah, we. Mm. I meant to. I for, forgot. See, it's on my list here. But that stuff rules, dude. I yeah, I want to get some. It's kind of expensive, Actually, but that's what Matt needs. Yeah, what? it really is. I think so? You put it in that a cotton or, gun, and yeah, it's pre-thickened. It's David Reese built a five-inch Punisher with one at Tim's house, and Tim had an electric caulk gun, so he was just like, like laying out fillets, and then just smoothed it out, and he built a whole five-inch Punisher in like an hour and a half, internal and yeah. external fillets. It's just a little bit more expensive, but the convenience factor. Well, is and here's absurd. the thing about it being expensive too. Yes, like on a, a scale, it is expensive, but growing up as somebody who really wanted to do rockets and had no money for it, seeing the thirty five or whatever dollar tube of West six ten versus the two hundred dollar a gallon for regular West laminating epoxy is quite attractive. Because yes, it's technically a better deal to buy the whole gallon of West or even a hundred bucks for the US composites gallon. But to have pre filled, like mix it in the tube, you buy a four dollar caulk gun from Harbor Freight and you have a high quality epoxy yeah. for 
half the cheapest option for a gallon it makes a lot of sense and like you can put the cap back on it i did the fillets on my full scale arcus i did the like the rear ring i glued it in on my seven and a half inch fat boy then did a fillet on that and did the fillets on my dad's five inch wild man goblin with one tube and it still wasn't empty honestly it makes sense kind of like i could see myself getting you just using that for structural stuff and then just using the laminating epoxy for laminating purposes or giant projects where you need an absurd amount of epoxy what i'm going to start doing is mixing colloidal silica when i'm doing epoxy like that like for fillets i'm going to put it in like a frosting bag and i'm going to get one of the fun like pretty oh. design tips and do fillets <laughs> and just leave them Whoa. like that i'll put like little bow ties on my fillets <laughs> some stars and yeah exactly stars. it'll be really aerodynamic they're fins with their yeah fins. He, yeah, that's awesome. He's gonna pipe his fill. Yeah, <laughs> that's cool. <laughs> uh, Jonathan Gabriel says, "For doing fillets, I love Thixel by Total Boat." There you go. I said Thixel. That's not what it's called. It's Thix O. JB Weld is also a good choice in high speed, high temp stuff. If I want something done fast, then the Loctite Five Minute Epoxy and JB Quick is another good choice. Taylor's with you on the JB Quick. It, isn't Thixo the same as the West Six Ten? I I mean. Yeah, I don't have any confirmation of that, oh, okay. but yeah, it's like identical. It, the tips that mix are the same and the tubes are exactly the same. So <laughs> it stands to reason that the epoxy itself might also be the same, but uh, yeah, you know. It's at least the same form factor. Yeah, and it's still a boat epoxy either way. It's not like West System is developed for aerospace performance. Yeah. It's a boat epoxy either way. Uh, he continues, as for laminating fiberglass and carbon fiber, I like to use total boat resin with a medium hardener. There you go. If it can build a boat, it can build a rocket. Bingus Bobby. Hey, he yeah. says, yeah. <laughs> West System 610 is the way to go. I'm using it for my first fiberglass rocket and my level two. It works great. The static mixers are great for doing, oh, internal fillets. Dang, yeah. If you have the back ring off, just reach in there and squeeze it in. Yeah. That's kind of oh, yeah, sick. That's... I won't lie. Huh. You could also put a, just shove a piece of tubing on there. and That's what I was thinking. Do some real yeah, like deep. I fantasize, well, of course, tubing. it would waste a bunch of epoxy, but <laughs> just drop it down to the top centering ring and just squirt <laughs> it in three feet down the tube. I, so I did that with, uh, I don't remember what rocket it was, but I used it really long. No, no, for the top ring. But yeah, the V2, I did use oh. like surgical tubing and then I used chopped carbon filled epoxy in a big syringe and just like piped mm. it out and it was beautiful. But that one was easy it. because the boat tail came off. So I had an eight inch hole to work with. So it was really, really like you could put your whole hand in there. Um Eric Beavers says, I really like ProLine 4500. I know a lot of folks don't care for it because of the mess, but I've not had that problem. It sounds like he's just like a reasonable user of epoxy. Um, <laughs> West Systems is my second favorite, mostly because of the thickening products. Yeah, ProLine 4500, I do like a lot too. And I just ordered some of it for a project that I'm working on with Eric, actually. Um, if you want to know more about that, patreon.com slash rocket vlogs. But uh, yeah, I like it a lot. Like it's, it finishes super nice. Like when it's cured, it's all smooth and pretty. So if you can just get the fillet shape good, like you don't have to touch it. It's a beautiful thing. Um, he continues, I don't like the BSI stuff. <sighs> My heart's broken a little bit. Turns out I'm very <laughs> allergic to it. All right, never mind. I should have finished the sentence. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Curious if anyone has had any problems with BSI 5, 15, or 30 minute causing serious health problems. Oh my God. I mean, Ooh. I have it. I mean, it certainly smells like a health problem. But... <laughs> it smells like cat. It does. Dude. Let's all let's all own it. That is what it <laughs> smells like. Um, yeah, I don't. I mean, I haven't had any personal experiences, but that does. If you had any personal experiences with being allergic to or having a weird reaction to Bob Smith epoxy, uh, let us know. I I use it as shower gel personally whoa oh, that's how you use your hair to stay out. that's what i was yeah. about to say this is all epoxy up here wow <laughs> i haven't washed this in five years that's um sick. all right last one alex he left us a bit of a novel here so he was actually the second to comment but i put it towards the end 
deep breath. <laughs> the last 18 months, I went on an epoxy soul surge of sorts because I wanted to find something that I could use for all of my future projects. I wanted something strong, affordable, and something less likely to have stock issues in the future. I won't name any names. Cough, rock epoxy. Oh, we didn't talk. <laughs> we can talk about rock epoxy and we loop back around here for a second. Uh, I could write a multi page paper about epoxy with the number of different ones I've tried at this point, but I'll just share a few that I like. I had a lot of fellow Rocketeers recommend Loctite E120HP, which is an aerospace grade structural epoxy, which works great for building rockets and making strong thing fillets. Thing. I can't talk, all right? Rightfully so, the stuff is awesome. The consistency is thick with a little bit of sag, which works great in most rocket building applications, and it's strong when cured. The only problem is that it's pretty expensive. A fellow Rocketeer, Conway Stevens, put me onto an epoxy called, oh, Infinity Bond EP120. Oh, EP120. Okay which is essentially just repacked Loctite that's not Loctite branded. For that reason, it's sold for a third of the price when buying 400 milliliter tubes. Oh my God, 400 milliliter? That's Whoa, huge. That's the big one. I Jeez. did a side-by-side -side test with some fiberglass scraps where I attached the fiberglass squares fins to a spare piece of fiberglass tubing, and they performed identically. I was able to apply a lot of force without either epoxy failing. That's my go-to for pretty much everything anymore. The best place to order it is gluegun.com. Hey, thanks. Yeah, it looks $15 even. For a 50 mil? Yeah. Oh, I was going to say for 400, that's crazy. I'm going to order 10. <laughs> Still, 15 bucks for a 50 mil is not bad. It's 45 for the 400. What? That is like the cost of a Whoa. 50 mil of Loctite. All right, we might have to investigate this. Yeah. Uh, also, I wish for I fiber... had to just bought my Loctite. Yeah, sucks, dude. Should have been better, <laughs> I guess. I mean, I got it for twenty dollars a tube, so not not too big of a loss. But all right, well, fine. Also, for fiberglass and carbon fiber layups, I've been using Air Epoxy PR twenty thirty two and PH thirty six sixty laminating epoxy. It's a bit thinner than West Systems. That's crazy. And amber in color, and I've had a great experience using it to this point. Actually, I think I had some of that. It might still be at my parents' house. The final products are very strong, and the results I get are very consistent every time. Compared to West Systems, I was able to get layups with less epoxy and lower, thus lower mass weight. I picked it up from Mac Performance Rocketry. Hmm. You've used Air Epoxy, Taylor? Yeah, it's the laminating one, so maybe that's that one. I don't know the numbers. Yeah, I think... Off the top I'd, of my head. It, I still have some in my garage, I think. I think I had some that I adopted from a rocketry fan that passed away. Um, I, I feel like I used it once, but it is by weight. So I was like, yeah, never again. I just like the pumps. It's beep, beep, beep. So easy. <laughs> um, um, yeah. I don't know. It worked fine. All right. Well, I guess that's, <laughs> that's all we know. needed to hear. I was like. <laughs> On that note, I guess what we're trying to say with this podcast, and I'm going to look right in the camera when I say this, all right? For all the rocketry people out there, epoxy is epoxy. <laughs> I'm canceled now. Um, yep. No, obviously, for like general applications and stuff, it really doesn't matter that much. If you start getting into the nitpickiness of high performance rocketry, um, yeah, you're going to run into problems if you start using five minute epoxy for something that's going to go yeah. Mach three. But yeah, the I sort of laugh at all the discussion of glue because for your like the majority of the hobby rockets that are being built, it really doesn't matter what you're using. I mean, unless you're using yeah. it incorrectly, I guess, or like not doing your surface <laughs> prep properly or whatever, but like. Or not adding fillers in your West system. <laughs> um, Thoughts, Matt? But generally, epoxy, I mean, you're going to come out okay. Maybe it won't take the hardest landing, but you're going to learn from that probably and make a change because of it. So what it, it comes down to more personal preference and what you like to use and what's going to help you finish. Exactly. Easier or whatever. So the point here, what what the Anti Gravity Group podcast is actually driving home this time is, you need to quit talking about it and you need to start being about it. Don't argue <laughs> about building rockets, build rockets. And that's coming from somebody who hasn't built a rocket in several weeks. But, <laughs> um, I think that pretty much does it. That's the end of the Patreon stuff. Does anybody have anything else to add? Real quick, we are missing a segment from today. 
and I think you all know what that might be. Matt. Oh, no. Oh, no. There we go. Oh, no. It's that thirty-eight forty case of Taylor's coming out. It's uh, it, it's it's still in the works. Trying to trying to pick a color and uh, I, you know. Oh, he's rolling deep. You got access to that. He's machining it himself. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> That's. I mean, if you can get um, orange Blue. and oh. and uh, gray or whatever are the custom colors. We oh yeah, the anti gravity group hardware. Oh, is that the? Oh, the, I see. It is orange, orange and gray. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Call we, Tim and tell him. Tell him you want orange, <laughs> an orange and gray one. <laughs> he said he knows a guy when we brought that up on the live stream. He, so yeah, yeah. At any rate, my name is Braden Carls, and you can find me right here on YouTube at Rocket Vlogs, or if you're listening uh, somewhere else, you can find me on YouTube at Rocket Vlogs. You can find me on Instagram at Big B One Zero One One. My name is Taylor, and you can find me on YouTube at the Rocket Channel. <laughs> Had to think about it. <laughs> <laughs> my name is Shane, or as you might know me, Postart. You can find me on YouTube at Postart Propulsions. And my name is Matthew or Macho Match, and uh, you can find my videos with Brayden and anybody else that. Dude. I am saying we need to petition. If we put a petition, everyone would sign it for Matt to have a channel. Like, <laughs> yeah. We could take that video and it could be the first video of the match oh. or Macho Match Propulsion, Macho Match okay. Rocketry. Yeah. Matt, okay. you could have a video out before me. <laughs> Dude, I'll, I will edit them for you. You just have to promise to give me a split of that 65 cents per video you might eventually make. <laughs> Matt instantly gets like a hundred thousand subscribers. Yeah, it's just everybody's <laughs> new favorite. Well, wow. he's already everybody's favorite. Let's be honest. Like, I can't tell now. if he's yeah. playing okay. a character. Okay. I can't tell if he's playing a character or not. He's so funny. <laughs> yeah. Jeez. All right. Well, uh, signing off. Should we? We should probably start giving Nigel a tag out. Yeah, we should. <laughs> this yeah. is Nigel <laughs> Jesse. You can find him on YouTube at also the Rocket Channel. Yeah, <laughs> at the Rocket Cat. Oh the yeah, wow. dude! Imagine uh, Nigel the Rocket. Yeah, that cat. could be a thing. I took anyway. That's a whole. Oh yeah, <laughs> Get him an we'll, we'll save that for another topic of yeah. discussion. That is a good one. But uh, yeah, we are the Anti Gravity Group. This is the Anti Gravity Group podcast. Thank you for being here. We will see you next time. 